We got a uh, out the gate. We got a super chat from Eli Propek. Twenty five bucks. Thank you, man. Eli. Love the advice I got about sales from you last stream. Did you have any approach to sales, or do you think most of those books and courses are scams? Please do not stop doing these. I need all the help with houses I can get. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know, man. I think I think a part of sales, the biggest part of sales, the one I used to say when I used to talk to like younger dudes or what guys do, is remember what you look like, all right? This is what I look like. All right, I'm very aware of that. Hi, all right? So I have a limit on what I can say, do, or infer, right? If you're a young person, why are you coming off as a smart person that's been around the world? I don't want to hear some kid that's 23 years old tell me how he's going to run his life or mortgage. You know what I mean? Younger guys, they try to, they try to like jump in front of the conversation. Just be yourself, all right? Um, with sales, all you guys are sales and stuff like that. I feel like just know what you look like and know what you look like to people. That's like something that I feel you don't read. Uh, yeah, most of those things, they're all sales. They just, they just want, they, they, they're like football speeches. You want to you wanna read every book? Watch the Any Given Sunday Al Pacino football speech and just use that as a like if you want to suspend disbelief and live in your own melodrama to get yourself pumped up go for it i talk to myself in the car on the way to work i'm a f lunatic all i want to do is beat my co-workers it's a little numbers game you know and i just would treat it like a football game i was a pretty intense football player i wasn't really that good but i was intense um and i was passionate and um i don't know i use I, I that's all i just treated my job like it was a big game i hope that's enough we got Peter... 1.6. Sorry. Wait, no worries. Uh, we got Peter Blake with the 25. Yo, Nick, I work in the used slash vintage camera business, and it's booming. Yes. Thinking about opening up, opening up my own shop. Should I open a physical storefront or do online? Do not open a shop, dude. When you are like hyper specific style wise, you open a shop, you're opening it. Don't, you don't even need it. It's just think about $1,000, $1,500 a month slapped onto everybody's cameras that you're trying to sell. Now your metric is off. That's why I sell f for what I can. Because I don't have, I have, I try to go as wholesale to the public as I can when I price things. And I know you resale. If you think about it this way, if you st strap on a fifteen hundred dollar, then you have a, you have that, you have commerce. You have to. It sucked. I opened a brick and mortar. It was the worst thing. Fifteen percent of the customers were cool, dope people like y'all. Eighty-five percent of them were people I'd like to. Sp I have aluminum baseball bat head and they'll treat you like, oh, oh, you like cameras, and then get ready for everybody in the world to walk in with the biggest piece of. Sh camera asking you why and they saw it on ebay for 6.99 and i think i should get 5.99 it's, it's the worst worst thing in the world um i would spend way more money on uh perfect perf uh, perfecting a website and um working that angle better please god don't open a storefront waste of money honestly um now nah. private client only if you want to do it that good get a get a better presence following if you want to do a showroom but showrooms just cost money and you have to transfer it to your customers and it's just not that fun we got uh 25 from john stupid i appreciate your advice on these streams nick you told us to laugh when life gets hard and i can't tell you how valuable that's been for me keep your heads up everyone life gets better when you press on oh thanks that's, man yeah you dig on man well said well said you know um yeah, dude, it doesn't, uh, you know, the thing about people who go through, you know, it doesn't last forever. Especially, you know, if you quit the drinking and quit the, cut the dramas out of your life. Um, hit the like button. Chris Heredia with 25. Hey, Nick, we're wearing the same hat. I think you gave me the forward facing one, though. Uh, I know how, how to weld. Do you think building metal gates would be a good business to get into. Chris it up, Meshuggah. What is it, which one? Uh, building, he said, I know how to weld, and he- Yeah. Building metal gates, is that a good- Gates, it's so funny, I'll tell you a funny story about gates. Uh, Eric and I were drinking a lot after World Peace won, <laughs> together, on set, after we were done shooting. And we were hanging out with one of the set builders. I don't wanna say his name. But um, he didn't say many words, right? But he was a welder, and he would go, uh, yeah, I spent all, I'm out in Texas, I'm a welder. And we were like doing a lot of welding on the set. So um, <laughs> Eric's like, oh yeah, man, you, know, you weld, what, what do you weld? And he'd be like, uh, <clears throat> gates. <laughs> and we were gates. like, what? <laughs> gates. And we're like, gates? Oh, gates, like metal gates. He's like, yeah, my dad builds gates. And it was, uh, so now we, so we just called him gates. <laughs> we just called that guy Gates all the time. But yeah, no, um, you know what I would get into? Honestly, man, look up structural metal welding. 
like front awnings on buildings. No one builds these things. Uh, not commonly. I need. I felt like I've needed them my whole, whole life. Um, but dudes who can weld small things, like a, a nice cover for a hose reel, a gardening table, like on not on demand. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So go for it, man. Um, structural metal, metal garages, uh, metal frames, uh, stud framing, and, and all that. Shit. Um, that's not really welding. But um, yeah, no, welding's dope, man. Welders make, hey, underwater welders make a ton. But uh, my buddy Tim's a welder. He does really well for himself. Uh, but I feel like the welder hasn't taken the application to the residential homeowner yet. They don't even know their capabilities. So I would look into that a little more. I feel like there's a gap, there's a little bridge, or there's a gap, there's just a, a hole um, of something that you need. Shelving, things that people need welding. It's not, we know it's not expensive, but custom size shelving would be cool. And I think a lot of people would be into that. Um, <clears throat> That just that's it. That's it. Just residential application for welding, not just industrial applications or commercial applications. Uh, we got false with the 25. Hey, Nick, I ended up getting a sales job at Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. I know about cars, but I've never had a sales job in my life. I feel like I'm going to be fine. But any tips for me starting off fresh? Um, hmm. Nope. No, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on the new gig, man. Um, dot you would Dodger Chrysler Jeep Ram. Yep. Uh, yeah. Sell Dodge diesel pickups. S stay to these customers. So in the lineup of the vehicles, sell Jeep Grand Cherokees, Jeep Wrangler leases, right? That's the only thing, right? Talk about the longevity. The Jeep Grand Cherokee competes with the, the Range Rover and the cars that are two and three times more. The Range Rover is 160,000. Is that where you were looking to spend Mr. Customer? You were looking, or did you want to get a Jeep Grand Cherokee summit? reserve for 70 uh, for 70,000 that's half the price and has twice the stuff with a Macintosh audio and then the Jeep Wranglers I don't think there's ever been in a, s a situation where anybody's too far upside down on a Jeep Wrangler and we don't sell them over sticker yada yada that's the case the rest of the cars leave them in the trash don't even don't even sell them those crap ass like the Cherokee the uh, God, uh any of the Dodge the Dodge SUVs are trash you don't want those just stick to the, the pickups and the pickup, I think Dodge Ram, a Ram just pulled their pants down and they're offering a 479 lease on the pickup. So what you always watch for is in the car companies when you work for, who's going to hoe up first? Who's going to put their car into the street for cheap money? And it literally is going to cost the house money. Meaning like Infinity is famous for it. I'd be selling cars and let's just say uh, an Acura was like a good deal at like, let's just say 500 bucks a month in MDX for a lease. People would come in with like an Infinity JX, you know, whatever the yeah. stupid nomenclature that they have. And they'd be like, I'm leasing this for 380 a month. And I'd look at the lease and it was real. Yeah. And I would be like, go buy it. That's so yeah. cheap. Like, I can't even believe they're letting a car out that competes with this out for 380. That Infinity almost bankrupted themselves a couple of years ago doing that. In 07, I think they did. They almost put their company in the toilet because they were writing out. It was the M70 or whatever that their big body sedan they were leasing it for like 500 bucks a month and it had no business being fired it was like none of the numbers worked and it almost blew the company apart um you can look into it that's 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 why i hate infinity so much but whoever pulls their pants down first and hose their car out is a really big tell you'll be able to find out go shopping for all the makes and models that you want but um i think ram just did it with their pickups um and hey, everything's fun when it's a good deal. Like, hey, do I love Dodge? No, but do I, do I, would I pay $175 a more a month for a Ford or a Chevy? No, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's the sale, that's the, when, when, some, when you have a product that's gonna, the, 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 the companies, the, the manufacturer is gonna hoe it out, ha, play the whole role, it doesn't matter. Anya with the 40. All right. Uh, gay message ahead. Nick, I love what you do. Mom is headed for hospice too young. She was an architect and an artist, antique expert. Dominican coworker offer any condolences? Ex ex existential crisis. She's from uh, Puerto Rico, if that helps. Oh, man. Banjo Mama is a cool woman, man. Ah, oh, man, that's, that's tough. Sounds like your mom's a cool broad. Um, go see her a lot, man. Try, um, try to set up uh, a routine of things that she likes to do and make sure you never lose sight of them every week or like go go get a coffee with her or something every week or you know maybe maybe do something that she used to do or maybe something that she hasn't done in a while maybe you can take the um 
take the reins on something that she used to maybe yeah. a, maybe a task maybe something she used to make food wise or a project that she used to do or something she was decent at i'm sure architect she probably had a whole subset of skills and interests maybe it's a time that you uh you know you you carry those on uh for her and in front of her and make sure that you uh you you know hey value the time that you got with her you know bleed her dry for all her great ideas <laughs> and enjoy the time i mean that in the in, in the best way but uh, yeah, sorry that's happening, man. Uh, life, uh, life is a, sometimes a swift kick to the balls while you're holding a measuring cup in front of it. And uh, obviously, I don't want any anything bad to happen to anybody's family. It's tough to lose, man. But uh, what I would do is, uh, yeah, do the you know ask her the pointed questions and try to uh, maybe identify and outline some uh, activities that'll keep a, a rigid schedule and keep uh, keep things positive for the the rest of the time that you got. Yeah, rubles with twenty. Hey, Nick, happy to say I got accepted into tech school today. I'm going for HVAC. You, Jet, and Chris really inspired me to pursue an HVAC career. Love you all so much. You're freaking over-serving. <laughs> You're over-serving. That's my daughter. <laughs> uh, appreciate it, man. Congratulations on that. Um, you get that side hustle out immediately. You'd be shocked. Hit the ground running with a small. Open an LLC immediately. Immediately, buddy. Do that for, your Do that for yourself for your birthday. Call it. Overserved LLC, whatever your thing is, and then uh, open a side maintenance business and do the really, really lazy person, elderly elementary uh, filter maintenance, and start doing that day one, and uh, that'll be a side hustle. By the time, by the time you get good at it, you're gonna be out of school. You know what I mean? You learn how to do that shit off the rip, and then I would love uh, to create a little side hustle for myself the entire way. Always wished I would have did that on the side. Um, I used to do like buying cars for people, but I would basically just be like, give me $200 <laughs> or give me $300 or something like that. And I'll do your whole deal for you. Um, but I didn't do it like in a way that I, you know, hey, I gotta be dad here, not. Mm -hmm.